Aloha. So let's talk a little bit about the, the top levels of regulation, uh, positive and <clears throat> optimum re regulation. You know, uh, if, if things are going well in life, you know, most people will probably consider themselves in this state, you know, especially young people that, you know, have no real problems or complaints, you know, no medical diagnosis, I'm not taking any medications, you know, maybe I do some things for my health, or maybe I just take it for granted, and you know, like I'm feeding myself, you know, fast food, junk food, not uh, really giving any thought to it because things are working okay. You know, I'm, I'm not complaining. Um, so you know, maybe in positive or or even optimum regulation. But how do we? We don't even know. You know, what's the difference between not being sick and being truly well or optimally well? Uh, you know, so. Uh, we just don't know until we try, right? Just like with healing, how do we know if we can heal something or not if we don't try? You know, when I went to, when I was in, in uh, school to be a doctor, uh, you know, I learned for, for the eyes, you know, with cataracts, for example. Well, you know, we watch them get ripe. They call it, when it's ripe, you, you know, take it out. Surgical. Uh, and, <coughs> excuse me, I didn't accept that that's the best answer. You know, the, to me, the best answer is, hmm, uh, okay, yeah, first do no harm. I, I get that we don't do surgery until it becomes the, the only resort because uh, we're doing harm. Controlled damage is, is by definition what surgery is. Uh, but, but that gives us years to try things that are non-toxic, non-invasive, you know, natural interventions. We know there's risk factors, so we began there. What are the risk factors? Oh, can we reduce some of those? How about sugar and dairy? You know, these are major risk factors for cataract. And how many eye doctors are coaching, are doing health coaching with their patients? We're not trained to. We're not trained to think, oh, that's kind of, I don't know, it's not very professional. Professional is to sell glasses and sell surgery and sell drugs and you know that's glorified to, to the commercialism the product productization of, of healing uh, and there's certainly a place for for, for products and services you know, uh, <coughs> and 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 I believe there's a huge place for us you know in this context of looking at the big picture to re-spiritualize commerce when I read I look at the origins of things to begin to, to tease out what they really are. You know, not just what we think they are, not just we've been trained to think about them, but commerce, when I break it down, is calm with mercy, mercy, with mercy. We interact with mercy, not, you know, often the meanings get twisted till they're the opposite, merciless. Commerce is merciless, it's war. The, the, the whole law, the oldest written law, the law of Hammurabi, it's the law of, of the sea, the law of commerce. It's the same, the law of war. It's how much of your life energy can I extract for me, for my benefit, not even for our benefit. Uh, about 20 years ago, I, I chose to take a vow of poverty, spiritual poverty, which is actually, you know, a, a vow of to manifest true abundance, which is in the spirit. Uh, so I, I feel very abundant, I feel uh, very blessed to have, you know, had the, the, the fortitude and the grace to, to follow a different path, you know, uh, you know, two roads diverged in that wood and I took the one less traveled by. And, and I'm here, you know, with the, the gleanings of, of that healing path. I was supposed to be dead actually 18 years ago. Uh, I found out you know, about 30 years ago that, that I would be dead by age 40. Uh, and fortunately, I found that out from a practitioner of European biological medicine who had the tools and techniques and instruments and training to not only help me, guide me uh, on a different path to make a course correction. You know, if, if, you're, if you're headed for the moon, you think, but you're actually headed for Mars, you know, and you're still at the Earth, you can make you can make that course correction and still get there on your journey. You know, you can't wait till you're halfway to, to Mars and then say, oh, shit, whoops. <laughs> so, uh, 
Yeah, so I, I'm very blessed, very fortunate to have, have learned German electroac diagnostic electroacupuncture and learned about bioelectronics of Vincent and some of these, you know, still cutting edge, still, they call it the medicine of the future in Europe, the BEV, which is the basis for my five phases of health model, based on hundreds of thousands of patients, not only observing them at their changes, their biophysics, the protons, electrons, and, and photons in their body, as I interpret it, uh, through the course of getting sick, but also through the course of restoring health from that play, dark place, uh, that dark and low place of, of chronic degenerative disease, things like cancer uh, and other degenerative conditions. So, uh, so yes, you, a person is blessed. You're blessed if you have no major complaints. You're uh, feeling pretty good. And a clue to positive and, and optimum regulation is if you do things that should be good for you, it might even feel good. You might even notice like, hey, no. Yeah. Oh, I got some exercise today. I feel great. That was awesome. You know, some release some, you know, some good, some good communication molecules in my body, and and I got the message like that was good. That was good. You know, I, I find that maybe one out of three patients over the years is actually drawn toward that light of healing uh, through the suffering, the through the ups and downs of 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 mixed of, of negative and mixed regulation into the positive, and you know. So one, one out of three of, of your patients, your clients, uh, uh, people that might be coaching or teaching uh, or helping you know, as a caregiver, a family member, or working on yourself, you know, are just not even equipped in terms of the biocommunication by virtue of not being in positive and, and optimum regulation, just not able to, to choose the light. We're kind of hard, hiding from the pain. We're inside the pain. The pain's bigger than we are. Whatever that pain is, whether it's not necessarily physical, but it can be spiritual, mental pain. Uh, it can be suppressed experience that we're, we're not even feeling it as, as pain. We're not even, no, no, me, I'm not angry. What are you talking about? <laughs> Go away. Don't poke me there. <laughs> I don't like it. I'll make you not like it. <laughs> you know, if we're, if we're already making those positive healing choices, that's great. But even so, how do we know that we are on the optimum path? How do we know what we don't see? We can't see it, right? That's why we need each other. God put us all on the planet together so we can help each other, not so we can extract maximum blood from, from the others and be par parasitic. Unfortunately, we have a global system that, you know, kind of a, a system of domination and, and parasitism that, uh, you know, we're, we're going to overcome shortly. Uh, I believe uh, all the signs are, are here that, you know, when, when that system, when the parasites begin to go into spasm and, and grab hold real tight and you go, ow, it's when they're losing their grip, when they're losing their their life support. And they lose their life support when we are gaining ours as the host. So it's time for that. It's, you know, this is not uh, something that's happening, you know, I don't have the illusion that, that, that I'm creating that. No, it's a wave that's happening. I just have been gifted the surfboard that I'm, you know, trying to ride and, and share with you what I've seen works over 30 years of experience, you know, for the next generation. Time to give, to give back on another level so that, you know, there's no way in the world that, that, that I can personally uh, interact and, you know, even with all of you. Uh, so it's time to, to give it away. And, and while we're asking for commercial energy, for funding resources to, to fund this project, we're doing it for you. We're doing it for the people that you'll be helping. We're forming a university uh, for you that will be here uh, for, for uh, good for future courses, higher level courses. The next one following this will be on biocommunication methods. So you can explore and find the methods that fit you. About uh, 16 years ago, when, when Ray, who's uh, publishing this course through Healing Oasis, uh, began to apprentice with, with me in the healing work, uh, I tried to teach her the, the form of muscle testing that I do, which is an offshoot of the Omura O-ring technique, but I do it a different way, and I'll teach you that you know, again, the, the future course. Uh, and you'll, you'll see demonstrations of it uh, through this course as we show the 
some of the testing to demonstrate the concepts of, of the model. But in any case, uh, she was not able to do that. You know, probably a spleen issue that, that was interfering with that. And, uh, but she was able to observe a sensation in her fingertips, like, a, like actually she was able to begin distinguishing two different sensations. One was like a tingling and the other was like a magnetic attraction repulsion. It's like an electrical and a magnetic sensation. And but, well, that's interesting. You know, I, you know, in the, in the various ways of testing that I've studied, like that's never come up as, you know, <laughs> something that, that uh, anybody's used in testing. But I thought, well, if you're able to sense that, then, you know, just like if, if, if you happen to have a gift that you've developed through the challenges you've faced in your life of clairaudience or clairsentience, well, well, that's great. That's a gift. We should use our gifts. So she had this gift, and so I worked with her to develop a protocol that she could use for in, in place of muscle testing. She, she can kinesthetically feel uh, where there's biocommunication happening, where there's an energetic connection, a resonance, just feeling the resonance, you know, sort of more on a body kinesthetic level. Uh, and so there are many ways, many languages to communicate in, and many languages to communicate with the, the vital force of the body. So beyond just symptoms and signs, and those are important too. Uh, so when we put them all together, we get a more complete picture. Just like when we look at the universe, you know, if we just look at the, the stars that we can see, uh, we say, okay, there's, that's, you know, we think we know what's going on. And then the conventional view is, you know, they're, they're kind of moving around each other and held together by gravity. And then they say, but, but there's not enough of them to hold, hold each other together and move by gravity the way they do. And so they come up with a model of, oh, there's dark matter. There's something we don't see. Well, the same is true within. What is the dark matter? The dark matter is the spirit in this model. And you'll see all the reasons why that makes total sense. It makes no sense to <laughs> assume that there's some kind of dark matter we don't see out there and not in here. How does that make sense? You can't see it, so how do we know it's not in here? Well, well, no, we, no, we know it's out there. Okay, does that prove it's not in here? <laughs> you know, it, it barely proves it's out there. We can't see it. We're assuming it's there because there's some effect that we're assuming is from gravity. The effect may not be from gravity. We can't prove that it's from gravity. We, you know. So, uh, we'll explore those ideas, but more importantly, we will drill into how do we apply these ideas clinically so that we don't miss the opportunity to stimulate and support healing through the spirit as a physical substance, as the Holy Grail, the vessel of consciousness, the vessel, the immortal vessel of the soul that holds our consciousness. So um, we'll get into all that. You know, it's got foundations in, in every major culture, you know, from the, the Jing of, of Oriental medicine and, you know, and Taoist philosophy to, to uh, the noose of, of Egyptian, etc. So, uh, and it's literally substance that we can work with, you know, the, the, the modern alchemists working with, with the white powder gold and, and other, you know, a whole dozen different uh, M-state minerals or ormus, they call it, uh, is a whole field of, of mineral therapy, mineral-based therapy, that if we ignore the dark matter of the spirit body, we, we, we just can't see it. Why? It's not easy to see. We have to see it with spiritual eyes and thinking. So we'll take you there and uh, give you the map, give you the overview so you can put it all together and it's not in a piecemeal like, oh, there's this and there's that. Well, well how do they connect? How does this all fit together? That's, that's what I've been working on for you. So join me again. We'll see you next time. Aloha.